turn the bubbles out. Praise God. It's good to see everybody on this one for Tuesday. Tuesday. Keep it on praising. The second day of the week, and we're still doing good. One step at a time. As we move into day 19. Day 19 of our consecration fasting. And today we're Days kind of uh, kind of day that today is kind of a a free flow day. Before I do the, the scriptures, I want I want you guys to share anything that you've been feeling, even the revelations, any uh, challenges, anything you've been experiencing that you want to share with the fellowship. Kingdom business is all about I give you the topic, but I want you to share what you've been either revelations or challenges or things that have been happening to you during this fasting period. I want to open with our, our theme. Our text for today, for the day, and then we'll talk about it. Matthew four, Matthew chapter four, when Jesus was tempted, when he was fasting. I want to I want to read this scripture in particular because it's whenever you're fasting, whether it's consecration fast or you're fasting for Lent, whenever you fast, whenever you fast, there's going to be some kind of attack or temptation because the devil doesn't want you close to the Lord, because when you fast and pray. You're getting a closer relationship with the Lord. You're getting stronger in spirit. The devil doesn't want that. The devil does not want you to get stronger in spirit, stronger to the Lord in a relationship. So he's going to hit you with all kinds of distractions. He's going to hit you with attacks, thoughts, distractions, blind sights. He's going to hit you with everything he can to make you give up and say, oh, it's too hard. I can't fast this month because it's too hard. No, that's exactly what he wants. But as we know, amen, Sylvia, it seems like the attacks increase because he's trying to distract you. He does not want you. And that's why you, you answer by what? Praying more. With every attack, you pray more, not less. Pray more. Spend more time with God on every attack. And that's, what, that's why we get stronger. Because during these temptations, we answer every attack with more prayer, more relationship with the Lord, more basking in his presence more peace in the midst of the attack and that's slapping the devil every time every time you praise god anyhow you are slapping the devil i say it all the time you are slapping the devil every time you praise god anyhow that's why i always say praise your way through praise way to the victory over whatever we're going through that's right christine that's all that is all a part of resist the devil and he will what flee flee means run then walk the, the devil, the devil got to get gone. When you start praising, when he's attacking, he's got to get gone because he does not, he does not want to be in the presence of the Lord. And when you, when you have no fear, stand still and you go into the presence of the Lord, he can't touch you. Don't, 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 don't. can't touch this. <laughs> he can't touch this. That's right. Because when we go into the presence of the Lord, he can't touch this. He can't touch anything in the presence of the Lord because he's got what? No kind of hold on me because Jesus Christ gave me what? total victory that's why we have to walk in the authority that's the authority to walk in victory over every challenge we face praise god praise god amen amen so let's look at let's go through i'm gonna go through uh matthew 4 chapter 4 i just want to go through the, the temptations i want to go through the temptations and then we're going to talk about what you guys have been experiencing amen verse 1 4 verse 1 we're going through uh chapter 4 1 through 11, chapter 4, 1 through 11, Matthew. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him into the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and on their hands, they will bear you up. So you will not be strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus said, on the other hand, it is written, you shall not put the Lord God to the test verse 8 again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory and said to him all these things i will give you if you fall down and worship me 
And Jesus said, go Satan, for it is written, you shall not worship, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then the devil left him and behold, angels came and began to minister to him. May Lord bless the reading of his word. Now, two things I want you to notice in, the, in, this, in this chapter. Did you notice in chapter, in the second temptation, what was the devil doing? He was actually quoting the word of God as a means to deceive Jesus. He was actually quoting a part of Psalm 91, an attempt to try to make Jesus prove his power. But I love how Jesus answered. But on the other hand, since you quote the word, on the other hand, the word says, thou shalt not put the Lord to the test. So see, even though the devil was trying to quote the scripture, in order to deceive Jesus, Jesus came back with a better scripture. He, but on the other hand, <laughs> but on the other hand, we say uh, chapter, uh, chapter seven, uh, verse seven. On the other hand, it is written, "You shall not put the Lord your God to the test." So see, that's why we study the Word of God. That's where we have our favorite scriptures. That's where we have to have the Word of God on the tip of our tongue, or in on written on paper, or in our head, because every time the devil tries to deceive us. Some of the attacks, some of the attacks come in the form of manipulating the word to trick us. Let me say that again. Some of the attacks come in the form of the devil manipulating the word to get us to be distracted. He's going to take, if we don't know all the word, he's going to take a little bit of word that we recognize. And then he's going to use that as a quote to, to lead us astray. And that's why Jesus said, well, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not what the word, well, on the other hand, God says this. So that's why whenever we get deceived, if somebody's trying to misquote the Bible, and you go, that's not what it says. Uh, show me, show me where the Bible, show me, show me where the Bible says that. Sometimes people come, people come to me with, with a false doctrine. Some people approach you with a false doctrine, and they're, they're sounding all intellectual. They're sounding all good, and, and they sound like they know the Word of God, but they're misquoting the Word of God because they need to lead you to their doc to their doctrine. So they'll they'll deceive you and start off with the word of God and then they'll manipulate the word of God to lead you astray because once you hear the word of God you say wow wow that's that's exciting because you get excited because you do hear the word of God but if you don't know the word of God well enough he'll manipulate the words start off with what you know and then try to go around around the corner and take you to another place and next thing you know how do I get here amen John that's right John sometimes well, wait, my, my, my core. they try to sound deep if they try to sound so intellectual to impress you how intellectual they sound and next thing you know you're in the wrong place so that's why we pray for the spirit of discernment especially when you're fasting and praying and you're seeking to get a closer walk with the lord where that's where the holy spirit speaks to us keep it keep it keep your radar keep it like like jd you say keep your radar keep your radar on because your radar is going to let you know that's not right he's not he's not speaking the word He's imitating the word. Imitating the word is taking the word and making your opinion in it. Let me say it again. Imitating the word is taking the word of God and putting your opinion in the word. And it sounds so confident that people go, wow, I didn't know the word said that. The word doesn't say that. The word doesn't say that. Amen. So we have to make sure we always study. That's why, that's why, hey, hey Holy One, that's why it's so important to study the word. Keep reading the word. Because the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will always guide your emergency 360. The Holy Spirit will always let you know. That's right. Uh -uh. No, no. Wrong way. Wrong way. Error, error. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Not the word. Wrong word. Misleading word. See, these are ways. Now, notice also, the, to, first, the devil tried to tempt with, with manipulation. Another manipulation was power. I'll, I'll show you all the kingdoms, and I'll give you everything if you just bow down to me some people don't listen to the second part they just want to see the kingdom some people give in to the wealth and the, i'll give you all this and don't listen to if you bow down to me until it's too late that's a major trick of the devil he'll hit you when you're down he'll hit you when you got a little money he'll hit you when you go through hard times financially and then all of a sudden here comes somebody who's got all the answers to your financial problems and it's going to seem so easy and just do this just do that all you need to do is this all you need to do that, I'll show you how. I'll show you exactly how to do it. Just just do this. And you go, wait a minute. How can it be that easy? Just do this. It's going to be that easy. 
just do this and all my problems are solved in two or three days. All that little bit, wait a minute. Eric, danger, Will Robinson, danger, danger. Something's behind that. And we got to make sure we read the dotted line. Make sure we hear the dotted line. Because usually when someone comes along with all the answers of your prayers and can give it to you overnight, you go, wait a minute. Let me pray on this. Never, never have a need your correction. Now, the difference between when God blesses you overnight versus the devil trying to deceive you is when, when it's coming from the Lord, you always feel a peace. You always feel peace. When you're being deceived, you always get a kind of uneasy feeling. And that's the Holy Spirit telling you, hey man, Snurks, something's not right about this. Now you you didn't see a thing, but you just you just get this feeling. Uh yeah, let me let me think about that. Uh let me pray on it. And if it's false, don't pray on it. I need you to do it now. I need you to why are you so urgent? Why are you so urgent? If they're trying to make you do it right now and don't go to pray on it. Don't go home and think about it. Something's up. You, if it's real, they'll give you the time. Yeah, go on, think about it, think about it, pray on it, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Usually, if it's false, they, they don't want you to leave. No, no, I, I need you to sign it right now. I, I need you to make a decision now. Why, why are you so urgent? Why is it so important I do it right now? Why can't I think about it? It's because it's not coming from the Lord. It's coming from the deception of the devil to try to get you to rush into something you'll regret later. See, so these are just these are just things that I want to give those examples of what Jesus went through, how they look today. How they look today is false promises. False promises that look so good that you looking at you looking at the the, the answers. And don't look at the behind what's behind that false that false promise. You look at the promise as a real promise, and don't make sure it's a real promise. We get so caught up in looking. It looks so good. It looks so good. No, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't look at look not things are seen. Look at things unseen. When it looks good, pray on it. It could be a blessing, but pray on it. We'll let you know. Because when you pray on it, and you'll feel the peace of God come over. Okay, it's the right decision. When you get that uneasy feeling every single time, somebody says, something told me. See, we Christians know who something is. There's no, there's no something to it. It's the Holy Spirit talking. We make the mistake of saying, something told me not to do that. I had a feeling I shouldn't do that. I had a feeling something told you. No, that's the Holy Spirit telling you what to do or not to do. Because the Holy Spirit always knows exactly what we need and what we don't need when we're in danger and when we're not in danger. That's why we have to trust the Lord because the Holy Spirit will always let us know when something's right or not. And that's why we always have to pray before making a decision. Don't rush into anything. Always pray first. Ask the Lord for guidance and the Holy Spirit will tell you exactly. Will give you peace of mind to say it's okay. Or will give you a feeling of uneasiness to let you know, no, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Look into it. Look into it. Look further into it. Amen. And this goes for jobs relationships any situation you have to make a decision on anytime you have to make a decision pray first then act never make a decision without praying because the holy spirit will validate your decision as soon as you stand still hey tammy will stand still and ask the lord for guidance he'll give it to you but you got to stand still stand still and wait on the lord's response to let you know amen now on, on day 19 I want you guys, uh, uh, those who've been doing the fast with me, a lot of you came in during this month. For those who just joined us, every January, we fast for the month of January to put, we're fasting on food, social media, whatever your, whatever your flesh is out of control with, that's what's on your list. So some people don't need to fast on food because they got a really tight diet already. But some things, the, the computer time is out of control. They're on the phone too much on television too much and your flesh is all over the place even though you've got the food under control the other areas of your life are out of control so that's why in this fellowship who fast and pray we fast and pray on whatever is out of control that your flesh is out of control on amen so i want you guys to share i want you guys to share some experiences now this is where you share your experience i'll read it on the screen so that i can share with people who are watching or listening later, amen. Now, well, I'll, I'll start off. What one of the texts I share with you guys at the very beginning, 
I asked for prayer. I forgot to give you an update. Uh, I asked you, I told you that we were trying to open a, a new uh, uh, Christian store of online uh, online store for Christian products. I had the store completely up, ready to release the store on January 1st as we started fasting. All of a sudden, my back office that made the store work disappeared. Now I said, now, now, now what, what is going on here? The store was all put together. All the Christian products were ready, all ready to go online. And then the back office, which controls the store, vanished. I mean, it literally vanished off my screen. I went through tech support. I called over the place. Now, this is what happened. This is where the Holy Spirit let me know what was going on. I'm trying to figure out why would it wait until now it's time to release the store? Why would it suddenly the store not be able to be released after all the work I did for two months to put it together? And then I said, I guess what? I know what's happening. It's an attack because I'm about to put up a, a Christian store where we can support the ministry by going to the store. It's an eBay store where you can get Christian products, Bibles, bookmarks, all kinds of things from the store. So the devil's trying to block that. So then it got even better. I'm calling eBay. I'm calling all the different places. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the people I called told me I've never heard of that company. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. How can I build my, my store through your site and you never heard of the company who built your store? That means some, at some point when I was working on the store, remember, remember my, my mother passed, my mother passed uh, back on December 12th. Well, I was working on the store then. So at some point during that time, when I went home to uh, uh, deal with my mother's uh, her memorial and things like that, the devil jumped in somehow, and somehow, somehow a hacker got into the software. So I was not talking to eBay. I was talking to the hacker who was actually guiding me to put the store together, and the Holy Spirit revealed this to me. He wanted me to put the store together, steal the store, and get all the money. The way I found out, John tested. She ordered something. She ordered something from the store, but I never got the, the commission. I said, wait a minute, you went to my store, you ordered, you didn't, what, what happened, what's going on here? And that's what made me, that's a red flag. I said, wait a minute, if I'm not getting the commission, where's the money going? As the Holy Spirit said, this person has stolen your store and is trying to take your store, make money on your store with your name, Faith, Hope, Help Ministries, but he would be getting all the money, the, all the commission, and I would be getting nothing. So I immediately shut down the, the, the domain and, and I said, okay, okay, hold up. Wait a minute, wait a minute, the devil's a liar. The devil is a liar. Now, to make a long story short, this same type of thing happened in other areas years before. And when the Holy Spirit reminded me, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Cause remember before when something like that happened, you put it back together a second time and it was better than the first. See, sometimes we look at something as a failure, but what God says, no, no, let it go, let it go. I'm going to have you do it again, and the second time's going to be better than the first. I've had this happen to music. I've had this happen. I turned the software off, and the song completely disappeared. I had to, I had to write the song all over again, and the song ended up better than the first time. So the devil tried to steal it, and God turned it around and said, well, no, wait, let, let the devil have it. Give it to the devil. Let him, let him have that one. I'm going to have you do it again, and what you do, the repeat, it's going to be better than the first one. And it's going to be truly a blessing because, yeah, yeah, he, he tried to get in, but that was just a draft. I just wanted you to practice. And now I'm going to give you the real store. I'm going to give you a real song. And see, we have to look at life this way. The devil will try to make us think it's a failure to make you give up. But God wants you to say, no, that's not a failure. That's just the first draft. Do it again and I'll bless it. That's the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar to make you think. It's a failure. So never use the word failure. It's just a mistake that needs to be corrected. So when it's not a failure, but a mistake that can be corrected, when you come back after correcting a mistake, now is better than the first time. Amen. Amen. We well, are, yo, yo. See, that's right. See, uh, Pablo, all you do is go back to the word. One of the biggest tricks is when the devil attacks you to make you want to give up. That means he knows you're getting closer to being a blessing. See, when, when you fall, that's why the most important time when you fall into whatever sin, you have to go and say, you know what? Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, I've sinned. Forgive me, Lord, I've sinned. And see, when you say, forgive me, Lord, I've sinned, right after you fall, you just slap the devil. The devil don't want you to ask for forgiveness. He wants you to give up. So by the fact that you keep 
looking for the Lord and seeking his face. Pablo, as long as you keep seeking his face after you fall, that means you're still connected. And because God knows our flesh, he knows we're not perfect. So that's a trick of the devil, uh, Pablo, to make you think that you failed God. Because God knows we are not perfect. No one on this earth is perfect. We can only seek perfection. And as much as we seek perfection, that's what our, our goal is, to walk like Jesus walked. Amen? Amen. Snurks, you removed Netflix and you increased your word time, but felt you needed to do more. You're going to add the Bible studies, finish your, uh, uh, finish your book, a jewel in his crown. By, amen. So you so you reading is you reading inspiring books and you you and you're filling your Netflix time with word flicks. <laughs> that we we're doing. We we're, we're subscribing to word flicks. Uh, spending time with the Lord. Time with the Lord. We're, we're subscribing to word flicks. Time with the Lord and read His Word and 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 read His Word and, and absorb the truth of the Lord. So that's what you do, Pablo. Fill it with the Word of God. Amen. <laughs> Word flicks. We got, we got, I, better, I better copyright that real quick before, before somebody steals it. We, we, we're going to subscribe to Word Flicks. Words and teaching and studying the Word of God 24 7. Amen, Snurks. Amen. Amen. Watching inspiring movies. Now, <laughs> something I have put together, I have a sister channel I've been working on that I, hey, I might welcome, Monica. I have a sister channel. I'll give, you, I'll give it to you guys tomorrow. I've been putting together a second channel that's connected to this channel that I've been putting together a, 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 a playlist of biblical films, which is actually like Ten Commandments, all these different great movies that are actually on YouTube. I've been putting them in a list, a playlist of all kinds of great Bible history movies. And then I've been putting together another list of, of faith-based movies. And, and, and the channel, I'll give you the name tomorrow because I've been working on that as well. So if that's something I've been working on the past month along with the store. So praise God, we keep that we keep that under prayer as well. So when you go to that channel, one playlist is nothing but all the Bible history movies. Another playlist is nothing but faith-based movies. And see, there's other channels. I mean, I've got all kinds of topics. I've got for those of you who love sports, I got track and field. And it's basically all the different videos that the Holy Spirit guides me to put on this channel. And that way, that way, when you go to it, you know that. All these these have been something I have picked to put on the channel, so you go and that way you can go there. Amen. Atanya, you gave up phone games, fasting from food every day, haven't haven't been watching the TV shows, increased time reading the Bible. Amen, Tanya. See, isn't it funny? Have you noticed when you binge? Have you noticed when you for those of you who have been binge watching any television shows, have you noticed how it it, it seems impossible? To hit the stop button and not watch the next film it's almost addictive once you watch the first episode they leave it so that you gotta know what's happening next and next thing you know you watch two episodes and then you say i gotta stop next thing you know you watch three episodes it's almost like hypnotic so binge watching i i had i got this one show i watched i said i could feel it it was like i couldn't let the tv go i said wait a minute i see why people binge now it's very addictive you can get caught up in just binging one show, binge another show, binge another show. I, what amazed me was how much time goes by when you binge watch. Because next thing you know, you've been you've been watching a show for three or four hours, watching all the different episodes or more, depending on how long. Amen. Sylvia, fasting on shopping. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Tanya, uh, Chicago Fire had your attention. You binging, binge watching. Yeah. See, see. I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys. Rem I'm I'm dating myself right now. You guys remember in the old days they called the television the boob tube. Does anybody Does anybody remember that the boob tube? It meant that when you got in front of the te television, you got hypnotized and you just sitting there watching it as long as the TV was on. You couldn't stop watching. It. This was before before binging. It was called the boob tube, meaning something hypnotic. When you watch too much TV, it can't you can't let it go. Amen. Uh, welcome, welcome, uh. Miss T, welcome. You gave up gossip. <laughs> you gave up gossip on YouTube and replaced with prayer, YouTube and Facebook. Amen. Amen. See, that's exactly Miss T. Welcome. Welcome, Miss T. See, that's exactly what you know. Gossip on YouTube. Gossip on Facebook. Matter of fact, gossip is on every social media. Some people, they only use social media to tell their business or other people's business. And next thing you know, you're in their business and talking with them. 
and you got in the gossip and didn't even know. It, it's really, it's really tricky. Amen. Uh, pray for your uh, Alfred. Yo, we got you, you put that in the prayer list, right, uh, Alfred? Doing intercessory. Amen. We keep her in prayer. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, John, when our fast is over, I will watch what I want by choice rather than binge. Histor historical dramas. You see, is when you're choosing to watch something, that's not you're not addicted to it. When you're choosing to watch your favorite TV show, I'm not talking about that. Binge watching for those who binge watch, you know what I'm talking about. Is when you watch a show, you go to Netflix or whatever flicks, you go to a, a, a movie channel, and you want to watch one episode. And next thing you know, you watch 10 episodes and five hours have gone by. That's what I'm talking about as far as your flesh can't let it go. But you say, you know, I'm going to watch my favorite show tonight. I'm going to just watch one episode or two episodes and I'll come to you the next day. See, when you're in control, that's not what I'm talking about. It's when your flesh can't stop. When your flesh can't turn it off. Your flesh can't stop gossiping. Your flesh can't stop doing whatever it is you, you stop eating. Can't stop doing this. It's whenever your flesh, your flesh is out of control. That's why we're doing it. That's that's why we talk, we're talking about doing it. Time to, that's why we have to make sure we keep it under submission to the spirit. And the thing is, when you replace it with spiritual things, time with God, prayer, inspirational movies, whatever it is, when you replace it with the spiritual things, you'll find that your body doesn't want to go back to the, the worldly things as much. You may still enjoy your favorite TV shows, but the more time you spend with God, the more you crave the Word of God. That's the best addiction. When you're craving the Word of God, which is only going to make your spiritual stronger. Amen. Uh, uh, Flora, welcome, Flora, in Germany. Traveling mercies in Netherlands. We keep it uh, safe travel, Flora. Safe travel. Amen. Uh, Sylvia, I hope to bring balance to my life afterwards. I have been watched. <laughs> you have been watched before. Amen. That's, that's what it's all about. Remember the Bible says anything done in excess, excess is with the sin. When you're doing something and you're enjoying it, it's not depending on what it is, it's when you do whatever it is in excess. When you're doing it too much and you're spending too much time doing it, that's where it becomes an idol. When you when you can't stop thinking about it, you can't stop watching it, and you can't let it go, that thing is becoming an idol. Because your body is now seeking it more than seeking the word of God. You you crave it more than the word of God. And now it's becoming is you're becoming obsessed with it. That's when that thing is becoming an idol in your life. And so that's when you fast and pray to get your spirit back into control. You fast and pray, spend more time with God, stand still, read the word, gospel music, motivational movies, as far as inspirational movies, uh, Bible history, whatever. When you feed the spirit. In all the different forms, there's so many. There's so many ways now, in now in nowadays, with internet, there's so many ways to feed your spirit. We have no excuse. We have in old days, you know, you had the Bible, you had books, but now we got internet. There is no excuse. There's so many ways to, to stay filled in the spirit. You got like the sermons, fellowship, music, Bible studies, uh, books on tape. I mean, you've got all kinds of weapons now online we can use to use and get stronger in spirit to keep our spirit man in charge of the flesh man the flesh man wants the world the spirit man wants things of god our peace our worship our praise our spiritual things are tied up with our, our relationship with the lord all the cravings are tied up with the world and remember flesh versus spirit a non-stop battle flesh versus spirit amen Erica gave up sweets and started a green smoothies instead. Amen. Smoothies instead of sweets. Now, Erica, I tell you right now, that's a great choice. Smoothies instead of sweets. Because those sweets will bring you down. <laughs> Amen. I love all I love all kinds of smoothies. Uh, M. Rose, uh, I hope to exercise more. More patience and self-control. Amen. That's a great one. More exercise. Exercise more patience. See, Patience is a gift. Now I want. I don't know. We talked about this one time. Patience is also a gift. Now, of course, now a lot of that somebody says, "Well, man, you got you got the patience of Job, because how can you how can you talk to that person that long, and, and you have to have patience?" Some people come into our space, and we just don't have the patience. See, patience is a gift. So don't don't feel bad 
if you don't have the patience to tolerate some people because the gift of patience, I call it the gift of patience because some people, as soon as they come into your presence, oh man, oh here, here comes that person, they go talk me to death and you almost run, <laughs> you run from them because you don't have the patience for, for what you know they're going to say. So, so don't, so when you pray for patience, uh, Emerald, uh, T-Rose, uh, that's a good one to know that just want to, I want to be patient with people. Amen. Amen. Well, so uh, get here. Uh, Snurks. Are you looking, you're looking for what God says about a situation. Feels good. Amen. And you wait for the answer. Amen. That means you're now letting the spirit man be in control, Snurks. Amen. Amen. Your, crazy, your cravings become less. Amen, Erica. Because the more you replace the addiction with something healthy, eventually by the end of day 30, you now crave the healthy choice and not the bad choice. That's that's actually a purpose also of fasting praying. By the end of 30 days, that new behavior has now taken over the old behavior that you want to give up. Amen. Uh, Jonna, I gave up sugar and desserts. Only slept twice. Amen. For you, three days usually. Amen, Rev. Lisa. Pablo, when, uh, Pablo, uh, any any movie, any movie that that two, two ways, two ways, there are movies that are Bible history based, where like the story of uh, of the Moses, we like the Ten Commandments. The playlist I put together is like if you put in, a matter of fact, if you put put on YouTube, Google, uh, Bible history movies, then the, there are movies I didn't I didn't even know was made about the story of Saul, the story of of. Uh, Joseph, the story. I mean, there have been so many movies made that we never heard of that were fully produced about the history of the Old Testament. A lot of movies. I had no idea any of these movies were made. Why? Because the devil don't want us to get more entertained by the Word of God. So, so I, I've been. I looked at as many as I could. I'll keep adding to the list. For, so that's where you start, Pablo. Faith-based movies. Any story that is is faith-based, and the way you know if it's faith-based, faith-based or not. Is the storyline, and, and sometimes you have to re read the box first, because sometimes a movie looks like it's faith-based, but it's not, and so you don't. Somebody in the story is is following the will of God, or the story is about following the will of God. See, faith-based movies come in many forms, but they make they should make you feel good as you watch it and feel close to the Lord as it ends. So that's the way to tell Pablo uh, whether uh, to look at movies like that. Amen. Uh, Greg Medley, understanding and patience with your wife. Amen, Brother Greg. Uh, has that been improving, Brother Greg? Amen. Jay-Z, welcome back, Jay-Z. Stay strong. That's right. I know, uh, Jay-Z, believe me, believe me, I know that one. Uh, you stay strong. Because sometimes, sometimes God gives you a break. We think it's a loss, but God is preparing you for another job. But he wants you to get over that job. Like you said, this hurts. I've had it happen in the past. Where I thought I lost a job and I was all upset. But God says, Why are you upset? If I'm your provider, why are you letting the loss? Why are you getting upset? I'm moving you to another job. I want you out of that job. Sometimes your season over is nothing you did wrong. God wants you in a different place. And so don't look at it, don't look at it as a depression. Look at it as keeping trust in the Lord and trust and know that God's gonna take you to a better job and a better place. He's got you back just, just like you say jc amen amen uh let's see millie learning to, learning to thy own self be true letting go of uh codependency and not leaning on your own understanding amen millie amen trust the lord with all your heart and give it to him and trusting him amen that's a good one millie amen praise god uh let's see who else uh donna oh yeah we're uh, uh, Jay Z, are you male or female? I want I want I want to make sure I address everybody correctly. Are you brother or sister, Jay Z? Are you male or female? Cause I always want to say brother or sister, but I, I don't know which one. I just say Jay Z, but I want to say uh, male or female. Amen. Monica, patience is one of the fruits of the spirit, but sometimes it's not easy. You got that right, Monica. Like I said before, there's some people just by their personality, they hit our last nerve, and you got to be patient, Lord. Give me patience, because when that person comes in my presence, I lose it all the time. So, Lord, help me learn patience, because sometimes that person is being led to you 
because God wants you to bless them. But we don't excess patience. We know that, oh man, here they come. God is sending them to you. So now sometimes the devil, devil sends the people too to test you. <laughs> so either way, either way, that's what you, you keep holding on, holding on and praying for that. Amen. Uh, Justine, uh, what are you, uh, uh, Justine, what are you referring to? You stumbled on them. A uh, pure flicks, yes. Pure flicks is a channel like Netflix. Pure flicks is a channel like Netflix, and those are all face-based movies. Uh, Pablo, I don't know if you guys have heard about that. Pure flicks is like Netflix, but all the movies on that channel, all that on that service, they're all uh, is a su subscription. They're all face-based movies. Amen, amen. A series, a whole series. On Amazon, Amen. Uh, the Amazon Prime, praise God. Uh, Jonna, that's why I started back with your morning walks before fellowship. You know, sometimes, hey, creative ability, welcome. Sometimes, I, I sometimes when you take a walk and you just talking to the Lord, it's like the, it's like God is walking with you. Uh, that used to happen to me when I would bike. I, I actually wrote some blogs in my past. God would talk to me the entire time I'm biking. Sometimes the bike trail would be hard. And God says, well, this is what you're going through in your life right now. Keep pushing up this hill. And that's where you apply the problem. Keep pushing through the problem, just like you're biking right now. And you got to go over this hill. You got to go over the problem the same way. And a lot of times God speaks to you while you're exercising, while you're working out, while you're walking. So don't downplay praying when you're working out and exercising. Amen. Uh, we well, yeah, yeah, amen, Lori. The way you the way you watch for those is first of all, and now the way you, a lot of times when you see the first five minutes, Lori, the first five minutes you'll know because um, there are the two big movies that came out. Uh, there was this Bible series that was misquoting the Bible heavily, and and many people complained about it, and then they changed it from being Bible. Uh, they they changed it from being. Uh, a Bible truth to inspired by the Bible because they had so many mistakes and misquotes that they had. They had so many misquotes that they they had to change the title. They had the title, but instead of saying based on the word of God, they had inspired by the word of God because they had some mistakes and misquotes that were not right. But but it brought a lot of people to the Lord. So so they had to make sure they weren't misrepresenting by saying this is factual because those of us who know the word knew that, that, that that's not what the Bible says. The passion of Christ was true to the word. I forgot the name of the one I'm trying to tell you about, but that's one of the ways of knowing. Amen. Male, Brother Jay-Z. Amen. Amen. Thank you, bro. Praise God. Uh, see what? Sometimes the hardest part the hardest part of faith is patience. You got that right. Remember, when a, when a farmer plants his crop, he doesn't deal, he doesn't dig the crop up every day to see if it's growing. He puts his seed in the ground, and then what, is, what does he do? He waters it every day until it breaks ground. What we do in, in spirit, we want to pray and keep peeping to see if the prayer is moving. We, we, that's where your faith comes in. If you plant something, if you pray for something, believe you have received it. That's the essence of that scripture, Mark 11, 3 and 4. When you pray, believe you have received it. If you keep peeping, I wonder if God heard me. I, maybe I didn't pray right. I wonder if I need to say it again. You're doubting. When you pray, believe you have received it. And the way you believe you received it is after you pray every day, thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for answering my prayer. Thank you, Lord, for my healing. So you prayed for healing the first time. So after you pray, every day after that, you thank him. That means I have faith. I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to wonder. I'm going to trust you, Lord, and know my prayer is answered and it's on the way. Amen. And that's why we have to stay true to that as well. Praise God. The old, old body movie. <laughs> Amen, uh, Jay. Amen. Let's see. No, uh, Sylvia. No more unnecessary shopping. Amen. Unnecessary. Um, a creative ability. A new app called The Chosen. New Testament. New Testament action. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, we're patient. I, I agree, Reverend Lisa. See, we've done many lessons on weight on the Lord. 
Wait is patience. Wait on the Lord. Now, patience comes in many forms. Wait on the Lord is the hardest because once you pray, we have no idea when God's going to move. We just know it's done. So we have to wait on the Lord because God blesses us in his time. Not our time. He blesses us in his time. So waiting on the Lord, that's why I, we said it yesterday. Isaiah 4, 31. Those who wait on the Lord renew their strength. Because when you wait on the Lord, that means you trust him. And when you trust him, you're getting closer to him. Amen. So that's the importance of making sure we stay focused on that. The Noah. <laughs> yeah, see, there's some some of the big ones, Miss T. Some uh, that one, uh, Noah, and uh, uh, there was another one that came out, and it was almost like when Hollywood knows it's going to make money, they'll make them quickly without verifying some facts. And when you watch it, you go, "Wait a minute, let me let me get let me." <laughs> so, sometimes you have to say, "Let me just see." if I'm inspired by the end because sometimes they go from telling a story and they're inspiring the word of God see that's that's a trick word when you hear inspired by the word of God that just means I heard a Bible story and now I'm gonna tell my story see when you hear the term inspired by the word that's not based on the word it's inspired by the word so if you read the word and you hear man I want to do a movie about faith because I just read Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That came out of the word. Now, I want to write a movie about faith. Now, I write the movie, but I'm not I'm not looking at the word. I'm writing faith based on what it means to me. And that's where sometimes it now goes from the word to inspired by the word. Amen? Amen. Apostle Paul was a good movie. Amen. Last Temptation of Christ. Yes, that's a good one too. Last Temptation of Christ. Uh, uh, the Passion, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The Passion of the Christ. I, uh, I forgot about the last temptation. Amen. Amen. Amen, Melody. Amen. Yeah. Are there some visuals not putting before your eyes? Amen. Uh, oh, yeah. That, that's something as well. You see, sometimes when the pop-ups or when the things, that's why we guard, we guard our eyes, our ears, our mouth. We guard whatever we know makes us uncomfortable, Lori. Whenever something makes us uncomfortable, comfortable, that's when we make sure that we know what we can we know personally what we don't want to watch or what bothers us. So we are in charge of making sure, well, I don't, I'm going to change the channel or I'm not going to look at that. I don't receive that. So because the internet is so out of control, we have to guard our eye gate, what we see, our ear gate, what we hear, who we hang around, all the atmospheres and everything. Amen. Amen. Um, hey, welcome, Hope. Welcome, Hope. Struggle with food strongholds for extended time. Well, see, uh, Hope, what do you do when you do with, uh, when you try with food? When you try uh, with food, Hope, sometimes when we fast and pray, the first time you fast and pray, you, two things happen. One, you, you make it too drastic the first time. See, if you've never fasted and prayed and you've never cut back on food, it's harder for you because you've never done it before. And so if, if, if you make it too big a goal, then you fail. I don't want to say fail. You gave up because you made it too hard the first time. So what you do first, the first time you do it, fast on one or two things and then go by day to day. Like I said yesterday, when you made it through two weeks, what, what I always do the last two weeks, I add something that makes it harder because I know my, my discipline has now been prayed up the first two weeks. And so I add some more things the last two weeks. So when next January comes, I will start with all the new things because the more you pray and fast, the stronger you get. Now, so don't look at everything as a failure. Look at your desire too fast. God looks at your heart. He knows you're trying to do it. So the more you do it, the more you keep trying to do it and get it right, God sees your fact that you're doing the best you can to do it. Amen? Amen. Let's see. Pablo. War Room. Yeah, I love War Room. That's a good movie. War Room. Uh, 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 that's a heavily face-based face uh, face movie. Facial expressions. Uh, Miss T, what do you mean uh, uh, facial expressions? Do you mean uh, faith, the other people's expressions or your expressions? Uh, Miss T, what do you mean? Pablo. 
obviously what po uh, movies or war oh yeah war room war room is actually how prayer is put into action amen a bible museum has a section so that's amen millie that's what i'm trying to put on my channel the ones that are good bible history and movies to know that you can get get uh inspired by when you finish watching amen let's see who else uh, Ms. Uh, M. Rose, M. Rose, uh, is that is that are you male or female? M. Rose, I want to make sure I get everybody right. M. Rose, male or female? So I say, brother, sister. Uh, mind you, the word of God. Keep thanking Him every day. That's right. Keep thanking the Lord every day for the manifestation of whatever healing, provision, breakthrough, deliverance. Once you pray, thank the Lord every single day for answering that prayer because you have faith. You believe you've received it, so you're thanking Him. You, have, you don't have to keep saying the same prayer over and over again because God heard you the first time. So once you pray the first time, that point on, thank him. Thank you, Lord. Wake up every day. Thank you, Lord. Another day, I'm getting close to my miracle. I'm getting close to my healing. Thank you for my healing. Thank you for my healing. And as we said before, uh, M, uh, M. Rose, if you missed it, a lesson that I did last week, see your healing along with praying for it. Every day you thank the Lord for it. See the healing you're praying for. See yourself healed. Every day you thank the Lord, thank you, Lord, for my healing, and then see yourself healed and what you'll be doing healed. Amen. Uh, Millie, I was in Millie. That okay. Check it here, else. Um, and Misty, I don't have to. Oh, you <laughs> your facial, your facial expressions. I don't have to speak. People know what you're thinking before you open your mouth, or before you even say anything. Uh, uh, Sister Johnna has that. I said you don't have a poker face. Uh, uh, Sister John is the same way. Uh, same way, uh, uh, Miss T. When people can read your face, you can't play poker because you cannot hide your feelings before you open your mouth. People look at your expression and they know exactly what you're saying. You don't even have to say it. Your face says it, and that's a hard one, uh, Miss T. Because all you can do. <laughs> All you can do is when people upset you, think, think, think of, think of, think happy thoughts, <laughs> think of, think of praise, think of worship. Because if you don't want them to read your thoughts, see that's a talent. Not everybody can be read like that. When you can be read by what you think, and people see that, uh, all you can do, all you can do is just say, Lord, help, help me, help me hold my expression. Because as soon as your thought changes. Your face changes. See the key, if you if your face is read clearly before before speaking, that means your thoughts are connected with your face. As soon as you think something, and this is an acting drill, as soon as you think something, it reads in your face. So if you're trying to keep somebody from knowing what you're thinking, it's your thoughts that shape your face. So so what you gotta work on is what you think about when somebody says something in order to not be read. Because your face automatically reflects what your thoughts are. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Pablo. Amen, Pablo. I agree. These great people. Uh oh, the poker face, uh snurks. See, in poker, in poker, people look like they, they want to act like they got a winning hand, but they got nothing in their hand. So a poker face means you're fooling them with your face to make them think. You've got a winning hand when you don't have a winning hand. And they hope the poker face will make the other person play the wrong card to lose the game. Because they look at your face, your poker face is lying how you really feel. That's what poker face means. You're lying about what you really feel. So, but if you don't have a poker face and your face automatically gives you up, you don't have a poker face. <laughs> Amen. Uh, praise God. This little light of mine, amen. Amen, Snurks. Start singing this little light of mine to change your thoughts on your face. <laughs> a playlist to change your expression. Amen, Snurks. That's a good one. Play play a playlist of praise to get that thought out of your mind so it doesn't read in your face. Think on these things. In Philippians, amen. Uh, Philippians 4 8. Meditate on these things. Amen, Miss T. Amen. Amen. Oh, you use it. <laughs> You can use it. You can use it in whatever order you need, Snurks, as long as it works. See, we're talking about what we're talking about right now is applying the word of God in your situation. If 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 you take the word of God and you put it out of order, for example, 
if, if, if you say, uh, let's just take one example. Uh, if somebody upsets you, somebody upsets you, and you try to hold your peace. Well, if someone upsets something to you that upsets you, and you try to have no fear, stand still. Have no fear, stand still. But then, if 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 somebody speaks venom to you, and you will say, greater is he who is in me, than he who is in the world, I, or no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Whatever comes to your mind, whatever scripture comes to your mind, whenever you need it, it doesn't matter what the order, when you're applying the word of God in a situation, you let it come out in whatever order it needs to be to be activated in your life. Because what we're talking about right now is applying the word of God to all of our different situations that we need. You use that uh, use that poker face? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times when, when someone makes you bad, all you need to say is hold my peace. Hold my peace. But even though the scripture says, have no fear, stand still. Stand still. Stand still. They're making you mad right now. Stand still. Stand still. Stand still. See, sometimes we're we're using parts of the word to get us to calm down stand still hold your peace keep your mind still on him keep your mind still on him are you worried right now have no fear stand still you don't you don't have to say a whole scripture all you need right now have no fear stand still something worrying you have no fear stand still hey man elizabeth just start saying jesus that's right if you can't think of a single thing oh jesus jesus because there's power power in the name of jesus power in the blood of Jesus. If you have no other scripture, all you feel is upset. Oh, Jesus, 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 <sighs> Jesus, Jesus. Because what you're really saying, what you're really saying, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, help me. And you're basically calling on his name. What is this? Call on me and I will answer you. Call on me and I will answer you and show you great mighty things which you do not know. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call on me whenever we need him. Call on me. Use your authority. And remember, in the name in the name of Jesus, I rebuke it right now. I rebuke that thought in Jesus' name. I rebuke that lie in Jesus' name. I rebuke it. Bind it. Cast it out in Jesus' name. Capture every stronghold. Capture every thought not of God. See, this, what we're talking right now, this is how we use the word in everyday life. You don't have to sit there and oh, no, let me, hang on a second. I got to turn to Psalm 91. No. <laughs> If you're in fear, you don't have to pull the Bible up. All you need to do, if you're in fear, a thousand may fall on my side, ten thousand on my right hand, no harm should come to me. A thousand may fall on my side, ten thousand on my right hand, no harm should come to me. See, just pick the part of Psalm 91 that makes you feel comfortable. And just say that verse. If you're in fear, if you got the Bible, read the whole chapter. But if you're in fear, pick whatever part of Psalm 91 you remember and just say it over and over again. Because you're trying to feel you try to put fear in its place. Have no fear. Stand still. Have no fear. Stand still. Oh, love, power, sound mind. God did not create spirit of fear. God did not create spirit of fear. Love, power, sound mind. Whatever you do, you're applying the word of God. And you're speaking the word of God over your situation. And that's where we close today. And that's what this that's what this is all about. This was just sharing, sharing. I'm glad you guys got to share uh, different things you're going through and different things we're, we're feeling. And different things you're watching. Uh, creativity before we go. I like to pray Jesus peace into the personal oh, pray Jesus peace into personal conflict. Amazing how many times peace and resolution happens. If you can wait. <laughs> Amen. Key, wait, wait. No, no knee-jerk reaction other than have no fear, stand still. The only knee-jerk reaction we want to have is replying with the word of God. Every other knee-jerk reaction, we got to hold our peace. Every other time, you don't want a knee-jerk reaction to happen. But with the Word of God, you want that to be your knee-jerk reaction. The Word of God, answer every attack, worry, fear, depression, whatever it is, healing with the Word of God. And that's where we close. Amen. Praise God. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for a great lesson to come together, Lord, just to share how we're using the Word in our everyday life, Lord. Iron sharpening iron, sharing ideas, sharing the way we deal with different things in life as a fellowship, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this great fellowship to come together, just to love you together and share together and hold our peace together and say thank you, Jesus, together, Lord. We thank you, Lord, right now for touching every area of each fellowship member's life, 
for their diligence, Lord, for seeking your face six days a week in fellowship and remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Lord, we seek your face seven days a week, Lord, being obedient to your word. For without faith, it is impossible to please you. And those who come to you must believe that you are and that you are a rewarder to those who diligently seek you. And so, Lord, we seek your face seven days a week, every single day, because we need you every day. Amen. And right now, please remain still because someone's been watching right now who does not know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So no typing right now until I go to the prayer of salvation and the closing prayer. Someone's been watching this entire lesson who does not know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Somehow you came to this channel and you've been watching the entire channel, our, our praise, our worship, our fellowship, but you don't feel connected. Right now you feel like giving up on the world. Right now you feel like you're covered in negativity and darkness and suicidal thoughts. And you want to give up right now. But somehow you found yourself on this channel and you have no idea how you got to this channel. That's because God brought you to this channel. You're not here by accident. God brought you to this channel. That's why you're here. He wants to bring some peace into your life. You may be here as a backslider, walking in guilt. For whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back into the world of sin. And now the devil's knocking you every which way but loose and telling you, you could never go back to God. Once you fail God, you can never go back. And that is a lie for the pit of hell. None of us are perfect. All have fallen short. So if you want to come back to the Lord, just say the prayer of salvation over again. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. So whether you're walking in depression and darkness, or you want to come back to the Lord after being a backslider, both of you pray with me. Repeat after me, Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without giving it to you first. Create in me, O oh Lord, a clean heart and remove me, Lord, anything and everything that is not like you in Jesus' name. And if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is not right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us to teach us, to guide us, and also convict us to let us know when we're not walking in God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you the people, the things you're doing, and activities you're doing, which is bringing all the darkness into your life and tell you how you need to correct it. Every day, spend time with God. Every day, not just every Sunday, every day, spend time with God. Feed your spirit, starve your flesh, feed your faith, starve your doubt every day. And the more you do it, the more you'll feel the peace of God come over you to let you know it's going to be all right. God's got this. God's got you. Amen. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spirits, retribution, revenge, retaliation, and backlash, and every other demonic spirit, named unnamed, seen unseen, who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of the participation in this fellowship. And we cast all you demonic spirits out of our mind, out of our spirit, out of our families, out of our homes, all back to the pit of hell from which you came. In Jesus' name. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose the fellowship, Loose unspeakable joy. Loose peace beyond understanding. Loose restoration, Lord. Restore every area of our life, Lord. Loose reconciliation, Lord. Heal marriages right now. Heal families right now who are falling apart because of the devil's attack. Loose supernatural healing. Emotional healing. Physical healing. By your stripes, we are healed. We speak it every day. I believe I receive my healing in Jesus' name. I believe I receive my healing in Jesus' name. We say it every day. See it every day. 
Believe it every day until it manifests in your life. Loose supernatural overflow, financial breakthrough, supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let your blessings of abundance, blessings of abundance rain down, Lord. Rain down on the fellowship right now for whatever financial need they may have, large or small. For you shall supply all our need according to your riches, not our riches, your riches in glory for Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want for anything, for the Lord is my shepherd. For we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We're the lender and not the borrower. We are blessings flowing in, blessings flowing out. We are blessed that we may be a blessing for others. We are out of debt, all of our needs are met. We have plenty more to put in store. We are children of God, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. And finally, Lord, we thank you for a miracle, Lord. Each fellowship member has a miracle they've been praying for. So now we know as a fellowship to spend time with a miracle every day. Spend time with a miracle every day. See it, believe it, receive it to your heart. And once you receive it to your heart, start expecting your miracle. Expect your miracle every day. We don't know the when. We will never know the when. But because we know it's already done in the spirit, that means any day we wake up, any day we wake up could be the day of the manifestation of the miracle we've been praying for for so long. So Lord, all these things we ask, all these things we ask. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the fellowship say, Amen. 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 <laughs>